the two commandments are interesting. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, strength, neighbor as yourself. Just going through that really quickly. It's in three places in the Gospels, in the four Gospels. And what's interesting is all three are different from each other. Okay. Another thing that's interesting, in two cases, Jesus is saying them because he's being challenged by a scribe. In one of the three cases, the scribe is actually parroting it back to Yeshua because Yeshua says basically, how do you read it? How do you understand it? So that's kind of interesting right there. But what's really intriguing about all of that is most people don't think about the fact that, you know, you probably know this on some level, but nobody was walking behind Yeshua with a recorder. The chances of somebody walking behind him with a notepad, also zero. As a matter of fact, they say that the earliest of the Gospels referencing Yeshua were written about the earliest, about 35 to 40 years later. Now, you ever told a story to somebody and you say it to one person and then you hear the story back two, year, two weeks later and it's like the story started out as you got locked out of your car, AAA came, helped you in. And by the end, you pried the door open with your bare hand, you know, after it went around town for a couple of weeks, passed the secret as a kid. So what I'm saying is, you know, if I'm nobody, I don't know why, there's nobody out there talking about this in the world when they're talking about Yeshua in an empowering manner. Either they're trying to poke holes in all of it, but almost, literally I'm not aware of anybody that talks about the fact that we don't know who wrote any of this stuff. None of it. We don't know where it came from. None of it. Uh, when we're talking about the age of a text, how do you think they age? They determine the age of a document that went into the Bible, the originals. People usually say carbon dating. How many of the originals do you think we have? Zero. You can't go carbon date what you don't have. So how are they actually aged? How do people guess the, whoop, there it is. They guess it, they guess. It's, a, it's an educated guess and a hypothesis. Um, but what's unfortunate is people, when I say ignorant, again, I don't mean dumb, I don't mean stupid. People literally don't know about what they don't know. And you ever been sort of, you know, sort of caught red handed, not knowing about something and you go into this kind of defensive state so that they won't know that you don't know and your foot goes straight into the mouth and then you're trying to like backtrack on that and you kind of come out looking like a complete idiot. Well, um, I'm sorry, welcome to Christianity. Uh, I don't mean it that way per se all the way across, but um, even the people that would be considered biblical experts, the ones in the mainstream at least, um, were simply indoctrinated and programmed with information and the better they parroted that back, the more they were considered an expert. Um, how do you know? This one's pretty obvious because they were memorizing words and parroting them back. And what's interesting about that is, you know, there's all these places, especially in Gnostic Gospels, even though you're not supposed to talk about those, but in Gnostic Gospels especially, but it's all over the place where Yeshua said, don't add on to anything I said. Just basically parrot what I'm saying. Why would he say that? It's human nature to change it because he knows that they're not connected to what he's connected to. But there was an exception though, and we're not gonna go into that today per se, but if you go into a lot of my other work, go to magdalenefire.com. It's where all of my, I do monthly Zooms that I started a couple months ago. The first one was Ancient Aramaic Secrets of Mary Magdalene. Talking about a lot of stuff that people don't realize, what the word Magdalene means, where it comes from, all of that. People think it means a tower of salted fish. It's insane, but what I'm saying is, it's funny that when you start digging into a lot of this, you realize that people look at the Jesus teachings as stuff written on a page. And in that two commandments that I was speaking of, the Beatitudes is a perfect example of this, but in, that be in the two commandments, they asked Jesus, what's the greatest of the nomosa? Nomosa is an interesting word. It's a precept. It's what you could call puktana, commandment in Aramaic. And what that means is it's something that's basically written down and agreed upon for you to live up to or live within. 
he didn't reply with the greatest of the Nemosa, though. He replied with the greatest of the Aurita. Now, we're going to come back to this idea here a few times in the Beatitudes, but Ta in Aurita. First, what's Aura? It, it, it's, you know, say light. It's something internal, something shining through. You know, we talk about the energy. We'll talk about the energy body, things like that. Aura is an ancient Semitic Aramaic word. Aura, or Rhea, Re, Rhea, Ra, they're all ancient words that mean light, okay? Aura is an interesting one because what that, what Aura or Or really is, is in a modern way, I would call it an innate guidance system, an inner GPS. The reason he's telling people don't add anything onto what I said is because he knows they're not connected. So all they can really do is parrot what he said, otherwise they're going to change it. And they're going to embellish it and they're going to make it better. I'm not implying, I'm not implying that of the thousands and thousands of Bibles on the market and all of the translations that nobody ever thought they could make it a little bit better. Not implying that. Um, but even the word neighbor, you know, love the Lord your God with all your heart, your mind, your soul, your strength. Oh, actually, let me finish the ta part. Or re ta. Ta genders it feminine. What does that mean? Well, I thought we were told to turn away from the feminine, the dark. The feminine may not necessarily be able to enunciate in words how it feels, but it needs to flow. It needs to have an acknowledgement of its existence. The masculine doesn't really need the acknowledgement. It gets it from itself because it's obvious. Whether it's true or not, it's obvious, okay? Um, the ta is an interesting thing. Ta in Aramaic, it, gendering that feminine means it's an attitude or it's a state of being or it's a perception. Meaning that it's not a nemosa or a pukdana, something physically written on a page that you're supposed to live within or live up to, but rather it's an inner GPS, it's an inner guidance system that lives through you and as you. Now when you start looking at it like that, it's like, wow, that's something very different much like in that two commandments and he says love the lord your god with all your heart mind soul strength i said that quick just, there's a lot of words there and we could dig into that but it's a different visit and then it says the trachim la karabach shock you know that part right in aramaic no probably not um but that that interesting is carob 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 is it's like a little pod it's sort of like chocolate uh, no, that's carob. Uh, this is carob. It's an Aramaic word, and it was the word translated as neighbor. Now, I want to read you just a little piece here before we start digging into this, and I'm, gonna, I'm only going to read to you twice, okay? But this first one, it's talking about Archdeacon Saduk de Mar Shamun. He oversaw a calibration of the ancient Aramaic first and second century meanings of the Jesus teachings back to the original first and, first and second century meanings, pre-Muslim or Muslim invaders, when all the, or all the meanings started to change and all the lexicons and the dictionaries started to change. The church doesn't even know about this, bless their hearts. You're gonna hear that one a lot, bless their hearts. So the, all these different translators are like banging heads in a sense, and they're like, wait a second. And he's like, oh, I see what the problem is. Y'all are talking about neighbor like somebody next to you, close in physical proximity. So I just want to read this from Shamoon. He said, however, that this new de this definition was artificially limited and that the word neighbor actually meant more to the ancient Aramaic speaking people, specifically anyone you are aware of, include, aware of including yourself. Technically, Carob in, in first and second century Aramaic isn't just any one of you that you're aware of, it's any object of your attention. So that includes something dramatically removed from the Christian teachings. That Im includes the plants and the trees and the animals and the ecology and the air and the water. So love, detrakim, lakarabak, ik, napshak. Napsha is self. So people say, love your neighbor as yourself. Well, what if you don't love yourself? What does self mean? Self is the word napsha in Aramaic. Psyche in Koine, Koine Greek. In Aramaic, it's not pshat. Sometimes it's translated self, sometimes it's translated soul, but the direct translation from Aramaic is breath of life. Love any object of your attention as the breath of your life. 
So you're in a swimming pool and somebody walks up, you have zero warning and whoosh! You're just, your head's pushed underwater. How bad do you want that next breath of air? That's how you love every object of your attention. Anybody you think of, ever. So it's so easy, you know, it was so easy a few years ago to, to point the finger at the orange-headed monster in the big white house. I'm like, do you really think he fe is feeling really anything of what you're projecting at him? You really think that he's gotten to that place, you know, as that kind, as the person that he is, and honestly, he probably would get off on it if he knew that you feel like that. So it's like you're drinking a cup of poison and waiting for him to drop dead. So the whole idea of love the neighbor as yourself is something very backward. And I mean, on the way here, Michelle and I were talking about the idea of prayer. People don't, people pray backward. There's amazing stuff, and that's maybe another visit or something too, but there's so many things people just don't realize that they don't know. So what Shamoon said, he said, I know what the problem is. The others are using those new dictionaries, you know, the ones from the sixth century, changed by the Muslim invaders. We must be using definitions from the first century to be true to the understanding of the ancients. Mm -hmm.